Hi everyone, and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make this card, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. When you purchase Stampin' Up! products through me, you can earn free products. Check out my current customer appreciation products on my blog. The link is listed below in the description box. So today I'd like to share with you this beautiful card. So sometimes when I create projects for my YouTube channel, I want to stick with a small selection of products, while other times I just kind of let myself create and use however many products I want to use for that project. And that's what I've done with this card. I've used a lot of product. And you can see a list of all the things that I've used to create this card in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get started making this card. So the first thing I'm going to do is just walk you through some of the cardstock and sizes you're going to need to make this card. So you're going to need a card base, and I really like working with the thick Whisper White cardstock from Stampin' Up! And it's just cut to your regular size, which is five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. And then I've got a piece of regular Whisper White cardstock, and this is um, just a scrap piece. There's really no dimension needed. We're just going to be stamping and cutting our um, dies from this piece. Then I have a piece of the designer series paper. This is called In Good Taste designer series paper, and it comes in a lot of different patterns. And I've chosen kind of this concrete look. And this has just been cut to four inches by five and a quarter. So I think I said earlier that it was a four inch piece, but I think it's more of a four and an eighth by five and three eighths because there's just a really tiny little border around that base. Um, card front. And then I have this really pretty plush poinsettia specialty paper. And this just has a really nice plush design on vellum. And so it kind of will pick up the color from the cardstock that's behind it. But then you still get that really pretty texture of the design. Now this comes in three different designs. And you're going to have some that are a little bit more Christmassy than others. So this one has some, some berries and some holly leaves. And then this one is the poinsettia. And you could probably use this throughout the year as just kind of a floral background. This one to me does have a little bit more of that Christmas feeling to it. And then of course you get that same design we're using for our card today. And so that does come in 12 by 12 sheets and you do get two of each pattern. And then the last thing that I'm using is a um, piece of rich Razzleberry cardstock, and it's just a scrap piece. And we're going to be cutting some really cute flowers um, with some dyes from it. Now, if um, you want to use a different color for this card, everything is really monochromatic. We've got grays and whites, and then I've just used one color. So if you don't have rich Razzleberry, but you want to use a red or blue or even a green, you could do that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our stamping. For this card, I wanted to use a fun technique where I pull in some of that rich Razzleberry color. But I also wanted my image to be a part of the card and have that gray granite look as well. And so what I've done is I'm using a sponge dauber to apply some ink to the outside of my stamp. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. So the stamp I'm using is from the Forever Fern stamp set, and it's just this one right here. I do love all these other images from the stamp set as well, but I'm keeping this card a little more on the simple side, and so we're just going to stamp this particular image. So I already have that on my block, and I've got gray granite ink and rich razzleberry. So the first thing I'm going to do is stamp my ink in the gray granite. And that just puts gray granite ink all over my image. Then I have a sponge dauber and I'm going to pick up some rich Razzleberry ink and then just lightly tap that around my image. And then stamp. 
So here you can see that we have both the gray granite and the rich raspberry on that image. And so then I repeat this three times. I'm not gonna worry too much about cleaning my stamp, but I am gonna take a scrap piece of paper and just stamp it off a couple times before re-inking it in that gray granite. I don't wanna transfer any of that rich razzleberry onto that ink pad. This is just a really fun technique and you're gonna get a different look every time you do it. This time I'm just gonna focus right on those tips just so I can get one that's a little bit more gray. Okay, so now that we have stamped those three images, we're gonna use some dies and we're gonna cut them out. Now the Forever Flourishing dies coordinate really nicely with the Forever Fern stamp set. And I'll just show you really quickly what these dies can do. So I just have this little template. So this die will cut out the stamped images from the Forever Fern set. And then it will also create these really beautiful die cut ferns and little leaves and things. And so for this card, we're going to also use this little swag, leaf swag image, and we're gonna do that two times. And I have that die here. I did grab another piece of scrap paper so that I can cut that out. And then we're gonna be using this die to cut out that matching image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to line this up and use a little bit of washi tape to hold, hold it in place. I wanna make sure that washi tape is on the outside edge so that it doesn't rip my stamped image. Then I'm also going to lay down this other one and I'm gonna run this through my stamp and cut machine. I'm going to cut out all three images and two of these uh, leaf swags. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've cut all those out. And then the next thing I'm going to do is stamp the greeting. Now this stamp set, Forever Fern, does have some really nice greetings that go along with it. However, I wanted this to be more of an anniversary card, and so I grabbed my Many Mate stamp set. This is just a really great stamp set that you can add to any image stamp set. It just gives you that option to create more cards with your stamp sets. And so here is the happy anniversary. And so I already have placed that on a block and I'm using my black Memento ink. And what I'm gonna do is just stamp this in this space here. And then I'm gonna take this really pretty label shape and this shape comes from the Beautiful Bows dies. It um, is more of a Christmassy die set, but it comes with these two uh, labels. And this one is the large one. You can kind of see it in there. And then here is the small one. So I just wanted to uh, use this small one. I liked the little decorative edging that it gives. And I'm just going to center it over that greeting and place a little washi tape and then run that through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Along with the label, I wanna run through my rich razzleberry cardstock so that I can get these three little flowers cut at the same time. So these little flowers come from the well-written dies. And um, this is just a really another really great die set to have. It can cut out these really pretty um, greetings such as birthday, happy, welcome you, um, it has 24 different dies in it, and so it's a really great one as well. And so that's well written. And I just really liked the little tiny shape of those flowers, and we're going to um, layer them actually on top of each other. So I need to get six of these tiny little flowers cut out. Okay, so now that we have all those pieces cut, we are ready to put our cart together. So let's start by folding our cart base in half just along that score line, and then use a bone folder to make a nice crease. Next, we're going to add the designer series paper. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this stamp and seal. Just gonna place some along the edges. 
and then that just goes right in the center. There should be a little bit of a gap around it. So one tricky thing about vellum is that it will show the adhesive behind it, but because this has a nice pattern to it, we can kind of hide some glue dots behind those um, patterns. So all I'm gonna do is just lift up a glue dot and um, with my pickup tool, just kind of this pointy end here, and I'm just gonna place it kind of behind some of those pattern areas in the corners. And that's just gonna hold it down for me onto that card. And nobody is going to see it. So I just have four little glue dots in the corners you could place more inside if you'd like, and then that just gets centered on your card. And then let's go ahead and start arranging our leaves and our greeting. So the first thing I wanna lay down are my stamped images, and I'm gonna use just a little bit of liquid adhesive. This gives me um, some wiggle room as I want to place these. And this first one's just gonna go up here. So it's kind of pointing into that top right corner. Make sure my uh, card is opening the right way. And then this second one is gonna kind of go opposite to that first one. And it's just gonna come down, maybe at a different angle, just slightly more in the middle of the card. And then this last one is kind of a little bit shorter. We don't see as much of it on the card. It just kind of fills in a little bit of this gap right there. Okay. So you can arrange them however you want. This is just uh, the way I did it. Next, I'm going to add these little swags. You could make these any color if you wanted to add a little more color to your card. This one just kind of goes right underneath that first leaf. And then the second one kind of does the same to the second leaf. And we're just gonna place a couple glue dots. You could use uh, the regular glue dots or liquid glue here. Either one is fine. And it kind of just goes right there so that it's kind of touching this side of that second leaf and then that side of the third one. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my greeting. And before I do that, I want to add some ribbon behind it. So I've got some of this gray granite and it's got this little shine to it. It's really pretty ribbon. And I'm just gonna cut about 16 inches and I'm going to add it to the back. And you could use any adhesive. Lately, I've been liking this tear and tape for my um, ribbon. So what I have is I've got my ends together and I have found the middle point. And I'm just gonna bring that down so it's a little bit lower than center. And then I'm gonna wrap each one around to create kind of like this faux bow look. And then when I turn it over, I can kind of adjust it if I want one loop a little bigger or a little smaller. Um, I do have quite a bit of ribbon left, but um, so we could have probably cut a little smaller size here. Probably could have gotten away with, I don't know, 14 inches or so instead of 16. So then we can go ahead and trim those ends at an angle just to kind of finish the card. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one a little shorter. So then before we add this to our card, I am gonna add one more little strip of tear and tape right across the center to hold all of that down. And then I am gonna add this to my card with some dimensionals. 
I do have some minis here, but you could also use the regular size. I'm just kind of placing it onto the cardstock. It's overlapping the ribbon just slightly, but because they're mini dimensionals, I want it mostly on the cardstock so that everything um, stays put. And that just goes right there in the center. Just want to make sure everything lines up nicely. And then let's put our cute little flowers together. So I think the best way to put these together, since they're kind of tiny, is with glue dots. There is a little hole inside. And so what I've found is by using my take a pick tool and turning these all over so that the right side is up, then I can just put three of these right on that glue dot. There's two and then three. And then when I remove them, I can use the pickup tool again. Just kind of slide them off. And then I can lay them at a um, different angle. Okay, so here's a close up. So what you're doing is you're layering those two flowers on top of each other so that they're at different angles and creates a fuller flower. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with these other two. So just kind of pulling that off, doesn't really want to do that. Let's try the other end. There we go. And then rotate them so that they're at different angles. There we go. And then we'll do this third one here. And then to get them on our card, we're just gonna put them on some glue dots again. So just pick them up, place them on a glue dot, and then you can add them to your card. So I've placed one up here above the greeting. And then let's get a second one. And the second one kind of goes down below the greeting on the left side. And then this last one kind of in that little space between the two leaves. And then the very last thing I've added are these rhinestone basic jewels. And I've just placed them in the middle of each flower. And I've used the small rhinestones and they fit really nicely in those little holes and covering them up. So just like that. So some of the products that I've used on this card, you can receive for free with a qualifying order from my online store in November, 2020. And they are the rhinestones, the gray ribbon, and then this mini mate stamp set. So you can get more information on these customer appreciation products that I've used on this card by visiting my blog and the link is below in the description box. And if it's not November 2020 anymore, I am offering different products for the month of your purchase. So you can go ahead and check those out for your current customer appreciation products. I hope you enjoyed watching me create this card today. If you're interested in seeing close-up images or getting step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this card, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.